been studying for the NPR all day video on that coming soon and I kind of just keep reaching for my phone and being distracted. I figure if I'm gonna waste time scrolling, I might as well make a video out of it. So here we go, scrolling through law school admissions subreddit and seeing if we can find anything good to talk about. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, I've done no planning for this video, I just thought it would be fun, so I hope it works out. The subreddit for law school admissions discussion, how to get into American and Canadian law schools, help with law school personal statements, hey I do that, you should uh, check out my website in the description box below. Application requirements and admission chances. My scholarships from last cycle, just wanted to, sh just wanted to share my small pool of data for scholarships offers. I received last cycle for anyone thinking about attending any of the same schools. My stats should be in my flare still for comparison. Oh, I don't. Oh, here we go. Uh, their stats were a 3.4 GPA and a 16 high. Did I say 16 high? A high 160s for the LSAT. So the GPA is a little bit of struggle if you want to go to like a really good law school, high 160s. That's where I was, um, and I got a full ride from WashU, which is now ranked number 70. So, I think that's pretty good. I don't know if I would even get into WashU now. Tennessee offers me in-state tuition, but nothing extra. They sent, and while they did send in a form for scholarship reconsideration, they already had better offers. That is a, that's definitely a thing to know, that you can always contest your scholarship offers. And when I say contest, I mean, ask nicely for them to give you more money. You should do that. I did a whole video on it. It's right up there. Let's see. I don't really know what Hofstra is. I'm like so out of the game on even knowing what other law schools are. Once you're in law school, sometimes you hear people making fun of better ranked schools like, oh, we're better than them. They shouldn't be ranked so high. It's kind of like a jealousy thing, I guess. Um, but you don't really hear a lot about the schools that are ranked lower than you. At least I haven't. So kind of every school that's not in the top 20. This is so not an elitist thing. I just, it's recency bias. I haven't thought about law schools in a long time and I, so I haven't heard anything about a lot of law schools. If you're currently in a law school that's not in the top 20, tell me where you go and what you like about that school. I think it would be good to educate everybody about it. Um, oh, what is this? Addendum for undiagnosed ADHD. That's interesting actually. I recently got diagnosed with ADHD just prior to my most recent LSAT exam. The score I received was 11 points higher than my lowest LSAT. That's good. I began treatment just before, although I didn't receive extra time. I know my GPA isn't terrible, but I also know that I was functioning well below my potential in undergrad and struggled to study effectively for exams as well as the LSAT on my initial two attempts. I could have done much better than I did. I know ADHD is common. I know it might seem like an excuse, but I want to demonstrate that I feel as though I'm finally functioning near my potential for the first time. Is there any downside or risk to doing this? I haven't read the comments, but the first answer is no, there's no downside. It might not help, there's no guarantee that it will help, but it will not ever hurt to write an addendum trying to explain something that you think doesn't properly reflect who you are or how you're going to perform in law school or as a lawyer going forward. Um, I know the sub likes to write addendums. I was told by a former T14 adcom officer, admissions committee officer, that one should submit as few supplementary essays as possible. If you really want to write something no more than half a page double spaced, your GPA is high enough that an ADHD addendum won't add too much weight. Okay, um, I don't know what their GPA is. Maybe it's because I'm on a phone instead of a computer. But if this person is talking about T14 and their GPA is high enough, I'm assuming it's fine. Um, I've never heard that people don't like addendums. If they don't like them, they don't have to read them. Uh, I do agree, though, that an addendum shouldn't be more than like half a page. Say what you gotta say they can contact you if they have more questions about it, they probably won't. Um, so, you know, take that for what you will. I, I honestly don't think an addendum is ever going to hurt you. WE advice, please. I don't know what WE is. Um, oh, work experience. It's work experience. Context clues. Okay. Hi, I'm trying to start planning for after undergrad as I'm now a junior and a very type A and I know that I want to spend time doing volunteer nonprofit work. 
I'm heavily leaning towards AmeriCorps right now, but I don't know if I should plan for one or two years of working before law school. How much difference does it make if I spend one versus two years working? When it comes to applying for law schools, does it make much of a difference in making me a more competitive applicant? Okay, I, again, haven't read the comment yet, so we'll react to that in a second. First of all, I don't, I don't know this for sure. Maybe talk to an admissions counselor um, at a law school and ask their opinion. My intuition would say that there's probably not a difference resume wise one to two years it's probably going to be looked at the same um, for law school admissions scholarship purposes but if you are willing to work for two years if that's something you're interested in doing and the only factor is how it will look to a law school i would say do the two years because you might find out that you don't actually want to be a lawyer, that you're really passionate about whatever work you're doing for AmeriCorps. I always say, if you can see yourself doing anything besides law school, you should try that first. Law school is a huge investment of time, emotion, <laughs> mental energy, uh, finances, obviously, and it's worth it only if it's the only thing that you want to do. After filming for about 30 to 40 minutes, I realized that my screen recording is only 10 minutes long. So there is no more screen recording from this point on, but I did my best to take screenshots of everything that I found and that I reacted to. Hopefully I got it all. I guess we'll find out very soon. Thanks for sticking with me. Hello everyone. Just wanted to know if anyone would be willing to look over and edit, suggest any changes, etc. for my personal statement. Don't have much people I could go to since it's pretty personal. It would mean a lot. Thanks. I'm glad that this is also a place that you can go to get, it looks like free help on your personal statement. Definitely submit it here to get other people's opinions. I would say be careful taking people's advice off of Reddit because you truly don't know if you're gonna get somebody who's in college, in law school, a lawyer, somebody who's good at English. I take advice here always with a grain of salt, but I'm really glad that there is a free resource here on Reddit for you to use if you're interested. Asking for a fee waiver before applications can be submitted, is this okay? I think so. I would recommend waiting to start getting a lot of unsolicited fee waivers. I don't think that's a bad thing. I say take unsolicited fee waivers. I had an unsolicited invitation from WashU to visit and look where we are now. Help on where to apply. I have a 165, a 3.6 low STEM GPA and plan on retaking the LSAT in August, although the new meetings won't come out until later, I want to get a feel of where I'm going to apply. I'll post my list below and I'm wondering if anyone has any recommendations on what to add or remove to this list. Please let me know. Iowa, UIUC, UC Davis, UNC, Wake Forest, Boston College, Fordham. From what I know, those are all great places uh, for this person. I, I don't have detailed information on their statistics. You can find all of that on their websites. Um, but I recognize and have applied to at least a couple of these places and I remember those being generally competitive statistics. The GPA is a little iffy for some of them, but it's STEM, so you're probably going to get a little bit more leeway, especially if you have a good personal statement. Help me paralegal prior to law school slash legal career. I have two questions. First, will working as a paralegal help me learn whether or not I enjoy legal work? Probably. I need to know if I want to be a lawyer before I can commit to law school. This is what I've been saying. Very, it sounds like we already know the answer to this person. If they're not sure, they should not be going to law school yet. I got a high score 170 and don't want to waste the time and effort I put into it. But I realize now I have very little idea what legal work is even like. If not paralegaling, how can I learn whether or not the law is a good career path for me? I'm pretty sure LSAT scores are good for a couple years. I'm sure someone will have commented that. Second, how do I find a good paralegal job? I'm not gonna be helpful, let's move past that part. <laughs> My two interests would be to work at big law and then lateral into federal government. I only did a few months at a very rink-a-ding personal injury firm straight out of college. Didn't even use Westlaw or LexisNexis. I feel like I didn't get a good feel for the law itself, let alone the fields I think would be more financially or personally rewarding. My law scores expire in 2023. There you go. My GPA is a 3.6 low. I had a really bad last few years and my head isn't totally straight yet. I wouldn't apply until 2022. Probably match or bump up the score. Da, 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 da. Oh, they got 175 as a practice tester. The, the person's smart. Okay, somebody said, I'm currently doing this, changed careers and now working as a paralegal in a law school clinic in New York. It's helped me see the insights into law school lawyering and has definitely inspired for me to begin studying for the LSAT. 
Cool. Working as a paralegal will give you insight into the work that the attorneys do daily and get a sense of their work-life balance. Da, 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 da. If you find maybe it isn't, either will. Okay. I think we're going to give very similar advice to this person as we did to the last person. If you can see yourself doing any career other than law, try that first. How long do you think it would take to go from a 172 to a 179? Well, without even reading this, it's not about a length of time. It sounds like they have one or two question types that are just difficult for them. So it could be a day if you can identify those question types learn what your issue is and then nail them from here on out. But some people study for like six months just to get every single point that they can. So it's not really about a length of time. It's about understanding what your challenges are and deciding how important it is to you to overcome them regardless of the amount of time that that will take for you personally. Let's see, depends on so many factors, depends on where you're missing the points, how long it took you to get there, how much material is remaining. Yep, that. Under the opinion, anyone who's consistently scoring in the 170s is capable of getting a higher score. Consistently scoring might be a separate issue. They're all talking about the same thing I did. It's missing particular types of questions and figuring out which ones those are. I would also remind you that I think it's a three-point range either way that is commonly seen on the LSAT. So if in your practice test you're consistently scoring like a 170, say we'll make it a nice even number, 170. Don't be surprised if you get a 167 when you take the actual LSAT or a 173 when you take the actual LSAT. Just because you consistently get a certain score on your practice tests does not mean that on test day that is the score you will get. It's a good predictor, but mentally give yourself a three point cushion either way. All right, let's do one more. Chance me at Narvard. <laughs> Good school in Massachusetts. That's actually really funny. This actually reminds me, I saw a hysterical law school website the other day and my parents were telling me that I should do a video on law schools that maybe you shouldn't go to and red flags about them, which I think would be really fun and probably informative to people new to the process. But let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in seeing that video and if you have seen any crazy websites that I should take a look at for that video. In the meantime, thank you so much for hanging out with me during my downtime today. I'm going to try to go be a productive law student and get back to studying, but I will see you guys next week with another video. And until then, God bless.